Ah, they finally did it. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. We still had the whole 20% off and various other sales through Thursday, so many of the new offerings sold quickly, but let's check them out. Our first one is a Hunter Green Metallic Les Paul Special. This is one of the Gibson USA produced ones, non-custom shop, so typically it would look like this. TV yellow, or maybe even ebony, but this one's got a little bit of that St. Patrick's Day vibe to it, with our golden ambered knobs fretboard binding matching pickup covers, and a little pot of gold for our switch dip. Poor guy was just a little bit late to the party. <laughs> and his decal's just a little bit crooked. That's all right, we like him anyway. But ho, 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 hold the phone. We switched holidays. That has been refretted with like extra jumbo frets. I did not notice that on launch day, but the whole back is about what you would expect. Cream back plates matching your tuner tips, all nice glossy green. But aha, the refret even evaded the listers. But with the sale price, it was a little over a $200 premium. But next up, if you're a fan of 80s gold burst, you might enjoy this one. Going after the V2 style of the finish, they called this one Mountain Gold Burst. However, instead of being on a custom, they put it on a 57 reissue. So that means super big chunky neck, we've got the ABR1 bridge, long neck tenon, hide glue construction, all the good nitty gritty details for a 50 spec Les Paul. However, oh my goodness, dirty fingers? Interesting choice. <laughs> Super ultra hot rotted, but the start life as a gold top, they just added the kind of orange border to turn it into what they did. I'm personally a big fan of that nice dark rosewood fretboard on this. Then we get to the headstock and mmm, they tinted the lacquer and this appears to be satin rather than gloss. They swapped out our truss rod cover for a cheaper Gibson USA style. Okay, they are going for the hot rod style. That's a locking Grover tuner on this one. And yes, we can confirm that is a satin finish on the back. If you don't believe me, this photo shows it to you. But now flipping it over, first off, that is gorgeous mahogany wood grain. But look, we've got a see-through back plate. They want to show off that it's got four push-pull pots. You can coil split. Instead of in and out of phase, they left it series parallel. This one weighs about nine pounds. But now it's time for, in my opinion, the crown jewel of this week. I was tempted to buy it for a review. I'm just a bit too buried in work right now. But it's listed as a 54 Les Paul standard reissue. But they called it Thin Black Satin. I'm sorry, ma'am. That is not Thin Black Satin. That is perfect Silver Fox. That's a vintage Epiphone finish. Have they used Silver Fox on a Brian Ray Signature SG? Yes. But in my opinion, this isn't the version of the finish that I like. I absolutely adore it when the clear coat has ambered and it turns this kind of see-through dog hairish green color. It's just awesome. My whole story behind one of these is when I was like 17 or something, I tried one at a guitar center and it's like, this thing's cool, even though it's an Epiphone. That's before I even knew the history of the brand. I was still thinking this was like some sort of a import guitar, but no, no, no. That's kind of what we got going on here, except for it's like Les Paul Senior like in vibes, except for we still have the junior style inlay scheme, no binding, just on the body. I wasn't sure if the cream pickup cover worked on that one. Do you think it would look better with black? But it was funny, I just put a made to measure request in for a Silver Fox. I think it was a 54 Les Paul Custom because I thought that'd be really cool. And then this thing shows up, a juniorified version. But looking at the headstock, it appears to be a satin finish all over. And I'd personally want that really cool gloss clear coat because I love seeing the wood grain encased in that nice clear coat, but still have the cool finish. But you have a matching effect on the back and the neck. Demo Shop serial number 105. That's cool, do more of that. And if you're upset that you missed it, I do know the guy who bought it and you're gonna see it on Reverb. But now a 335 and what they advertise as a red glint. When you think red glint, what comes to your mind? I'd imagine something like the Rocket Red Sparkle Deluxe, super in your face. Here's what we got. <sighs> Looks like a, a faded 335. I think you can barely see the effect right here. It's one of those, I will turn into purplish blue at certain angles type thing. <laughs> and it's just not doing it any justice. But we've got the uncovered humbuckers with a very mild flaming to the top. The backside of the body, you can just barely see the effect right here and right there. Here's a better photo of it showing off, but whoa, what happened to our router right there? That's why it was a second. It got a little bit too fancy, but that one was 3,300. But now for 2400, there was an SG standard called Backlit Canopy. Seems to be some sort of a red burst SG, very similar to what you might be able to find in the custom color series. Except for they threw the witch hat knobs on it to make it look more 68. You got your bat wing style guard. 
Okay. It was either dusty or there's actually some sparkles in the headstock. That's a nice touch. Maybe a very slightly tinted lacquer. But here we can also see the black border has the sparkles as well. I think we all know why this was a factory second. Even in Gibson's world, that's pretty bad binding. I'm appreciative that they had caught that. And what's going on back here? Orange fade into pure black before a really wide burst. Certainly unusual. But I'll give it to him. A lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be when we clicked on it. But I saw a lot of messages about this one. Reptile Top 56 reissue, 3700. If you bought this guitar, let me know because somebody messaged me looking for it. And if you're that guy that messaged me, you might want to message me again because your email landed in my spam. I just barely saw your message preview as I was bulk deleting stuff. But he was saying it reminded him of his 70s Basalt Blue Deluxe that had super aged over the top. They did a fantastic job on this it's a nice metallic green color very subdued and the way that they did these pickups now i understand why this looks so familiar it's like a gretsch duo jet similar vibes going on here sneaky demo shop going behind enemy lines <laughs> i like it though is that some really ambered over binding and at first i was thinking is that really satin nah that's just ultra heavy vos Although, that's probably why I was in the demo shop, but a little bit askew. But now check that out. Natural back. That works incredibly well. And is also suspiciously familiar. But if solid color finishes are your thing, here was a satin gold top 335. They took it, gave it the creamed plastics, gilded out your knobs to match your finish. As finished, it's a dulled clear coat. But hey, they lied to us. It's not a gold top, it's a gold body. <laughs> but they give you that kind of dark back vibe on the neck. But now I'm curious. The edges, are they gold or dark back? If it's got the dark back sides, instantly cool. But if it's just gold body, not as interesting. But my number two pick this week is a 58 standard reissue in denim Pelham. It's like that really nice faded denim blue finish. It works incredibly well on guitars, especially when you match it with the cream. So I would imagine that's a Gibson 57 classic. It's another rap tail, single humbucker with junior vibes. However, it's a full on Les Paul standard outside of your bridge and controls. This thing is fantastic, except for the junior tuners. I'm not a big fan of those small buttons, too hard to turn. But where they personally lost me on this one is they went crazy on the back. <laughs> we got a blue body, natural neck with creamy stinger. But you know what? If you're going to have the junior tuners, at least have the old timey vintage looking open back ones. But ooh, demo shop number 95. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't notice that. So it's a translucent blue for the flame on the top. But then the back and sides is more of a metallic blue. I do like that. And at 52, I was also considering that. So this is the part of the show where we say, let's head on over to the UK side of things. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's the first week that I can remember that they missed one. I think they were just trying to let the 20% off sale run to see if they could sell through some of this inventory. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like the European side of things knows about the demo shop and mod collections, or they just don't like it as much as American buyers because a lot of this stuff just sits. Same thing is true for both of our demo shops. No updates this week, still just the same stuff. That's all right, USA Demo Shop is still here to have some fun. Look at this, down to 37 <laughs> results after the upload of their new stuff. We're down to one page again. No, that means we're gonna get dumped with a whole bunch of inventory soon. But here's what stood out to me this week. There was an Age Cherry 61 SG standard, kind of similar to the Oxblood finish. It's just a really, really dark red color. And with the uncovered pickups, it looks incredibly good. Kind of reminds me of some of the CME exclusive ones that they've done in the past. There was a figured 60 standard for 2,500. And I wanted to bring up the fact that the Gibson.com exclusives are starting starting to not be exclusive anymore. I've started to see some of the olive drabs fall into regular shops and Guitar Center now has their own exclusive version of this exact guitar that's a quilt top. Although they really shouldn't have used this guitar as their stock photo. I wouldn't really classify that one as a quilt top. I suppose we can cover some other news. The Les Paul Modern has now come out in a purple burst finish, as well as Mojave burst. And I'm a big fan of the Epiphone Moderns. So even though this falls under my usual new guitar day minimum, I wouldn't mind checking one of these out if anyone is interested, because I think they look 
phenomenal. Even if the price has gone up. But next up, we've got one of the Generation Series acoustics, the 45 style. Yeah, it's got some wood grain on the back, but it was the headstock. It's got this interesting basket weave wood grain going on. It's unique. I like it. And another unique one was this R9 in Lemon Burst. Normally, I like unique tops. I mean, this one's beautifully figured, right? It got the great grain, but... <sighs> That would kind of bug me. I can understand why this ended up in the demo shop. It nearly looks like armware, so it'd be cooler if it was down here. But at the same time, it gives a character. That might speak to someone. Everything else about it's pretty nice. Someone got a silly deal on one of the new hard-to-find 80s explorers in white. I'm tired of jokesters like this, though. Come on, guys. They're gonna make so many of those guitars, it's just slow rolling. Just wait until they're in stock. There's no reason to pay a triple premium, or even a double premium. If you want to pay up to a $500 premium so you don't have to wait, I get it for that. But please, do not pay doubles on these. If one is in the demo shop, they are in production. So hopefully we'll see a new batch eventually because I do have two on order for viewers of the show via my new guitar day program. But this one was a demo for a couple of chips over here, but wow, 1800 bucks. Someone got a good deal. Next up, kind of an interesting grain on this J185 with a really wide back burst. The songwriter was interesting as far as the finish goes. They have that natural headstock veneer. I like the neck on this one. It had a little bit of flame dancing. Here's a pretty good deal on a Karina Flying V, and that's 25% off right there. You've got a little bit of flame figuring going on in the body, which you can find, and it complements each other. That was actually a pretty nice example. I've seen some of these that get heavily figured, and I would say that's one of the nicer bodies. This was a really cool top on a 60 standard. Nice bourbon burst finish. But it was also reversible. It was a magical guitar that you could play left-handed and right-handed. The left-handed version was cheaper, though. <laughs> I just thought it was cool. There were two very similar guitars that we could dance around like that. And here was another lefty that I didn't even realize was a lefty when I was first looking at it. It's like, okay, 335, the symmetrical guitar. But when I got to this photo, I was like, huh, something's fishy with our side dots being on this side. That's when I realized it. And lastly, a beautiful factory burst 1959 reissue. You cannot go wrong with that. So, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this recap of the Demo Shop and Mod Collection. Please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite, or if you bought anything from this week's drop, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.